one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Brian Cruz? Here. Achinsky? Here. Stegi? Here. Okay, on the um, meeting agenda tonight, um, we have uh, item A under communications and announcements, a uh, letter of support for uh, Northwest, Mich uh, Northwest Michigan Invasive Species Network grant program. Uh, Department and Committee reports, item A is the sewer report, B is our monthly operation services report, uh, C is the um, October DDA report with, uh, along with the director's report. <coughs> item D is the building and grounds uh, minutes from October. E, the planning commission minutes from October are in your packet, uh, as is the uh, zoning administrators um, update. G personnel committee, H board of review uh, have not met. Uh, you have a report uh, in your uh, packet from the fire chief. Uh, J elections commission, you have uh, those minutes in your packet from the last meeting and uh, K and L the zoning board of appeals and uh, PEG have not met. Under new business, we have item A, consideration of approval for the township supervisor to seek funding for Oak Hill Park improvements. Uh, item B is appointment of board of review member for a term ending December 31st, 2022. Uh, there were two applicants uh, and one vacancy. Item C is consideration of approval of a resolution of the Charter Township of Filer Board of Trustees to approve a private road name change from Cutters Ridge Drive to National Drive. And then uh, on your table, you had uh, two agenda addendum items, and I would like to add a third one as well. Item D is consideration of approval of the preliminary development agreement with Charter Township of Filer uh, Downtown Development Authority and Gear, Gearlings Development Company Incorporated and authorize the supervisor to sign the agreement. Item E is consideration of approval of an ordinance to amend ordinance number 2021-05 styled an ordinance to amend chapter 12 of the Charter Township of Filer Code of Ordinances as amended by amending section 12.04 to adjust the annual service charge and to repeal all ordinances in conflict herewith by further amending section 12.04 and the effective date. And item F uh, that I'd like to add is uh, permission to get a new laptop for the supervisor. And if there are no other changes to our meeting agenda for tonight, uh, I would entertain a motion for approval. So I'll support it. Okay, we have a motion by Dean Cruz, support by Brian Cruz to approve the meeting agenda for tonight. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Under the uh, consent agenda for tonight, item A is the minutes of our regular board meeting from October 4th. Uh, B are the financial reports. Item C is approval of the uh, Township General Fund expenditures, which include the fire department, and those include checks numbered 40012 through 40094, with accounts payable totaling $50,584.48, uh, payroll totaling $17,583.59, uh, for a grand total of $68,168.07. Item D is approval of the Water Department expenditures, uh, checks numbered 3019 through 3027, totaling $21,309.42. Item E is approval of the sewer operating expenditures, checks numbered 1178 through 1180. Uh, totaling $10,958.43. Item F is approval of the monthly ACH payments to the State of Michigan and IRS, 
in the amount of $5,676.65. Item G is appointment of the Zoning Board of Appeals member for a term ending December 31st, 2022. There was one applicant uh, for the one vacancy. Item H is approval of uh, newspaper advertisement for filing uh, expiring committee vacancies, uh, or for, I'm sorry, for filling expiring committee vacancies and one unexpired term. Uh, again, if there are no changes to the consent agenda, agenda, we need a motion for approval. I'll make the motion. I'll support. We have a motion by <laughs> everybody. Uh, Kalinowski, uh, second by Brian Cruz to approve the um, consent agenda for tonight. Um, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And that brings us to public comment. Public comment. Thank you. Give me a uh, second to introduce myself. I'm Senator Bumstead from the 34th Senate seat, which is Nuevo, Muskegon, thank you, and Oceana County. With redistricting, this could be my areas, which would be Muskegon, Oceana, Mason, Manistee, and Benzie. So I've been out making the rounds, introducing myself, saying hello to all the different meetings and whatnot. So I'm here tonight to introduce myself. I'm going to leave everybody a card, has my office information that I will also give you my cell phone number. I can find my cards. Just pass those right And cell phone number is 231-250-0654. If you ever need to get a hold of me directly, please call that number. You can also give that out to your constituents as well. I give it out to thousands of people. But I just want to stop, say hello, introduce myself, but anything I can do, just give me a call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, um, under communications and announcements, you have a letter, um, um, I sent that a few weeks ago to uh, ISN uh, to uh, <coughs> show our support for uh, grants that they're going for to continue to run their programs and extend them. Um, they've been, they've done a lot of uh, work for us, been a lot of help to us, uh, particularly at the Boone Creek Park, uh, in terms of uh, controlling invasive species out there. They also did a couple of years ago uh, some extensive work, work along uh, Maple right next to um, Canfield Lake there on uh, Japanese knotweed, knotweed. And uh, I noticed this spring, summer, that that seems to be pretty much totally dead now and gone, which is, that stuff is really hard to get rid of, so uh, it's, it's really good to have their help. Um, on your uh, uh, reports in your packet, uh, the sewer, monthly sewer report is, is there. Um, it appears as though there's been a little bit of increase in the daily flow this past month. Um, B operation services that uh, monthly report is in your packet as well. Uh, things are remaining pretty stable there. Um, and just a quick note: we did have a water main break on Monday. Um, I happened to be out at Magoon first thing in the morning, and of course, while I was in the park, didn't have service, and I was leaving the park pulled my cell up to start making phone calls and I see I had a message. Um, I, I forget the name of the company that we just uh, signed uh, with that 
was putting some fiber optic in along Manistee Street. Uh, at any rate, right when I was heading out to Magoon, I, I see workers uh, digging there in front of the credit union. And so I kind of wondered, well, it's, you know, what's going on there? And didn't think too much about it. And listened to the message coming back in. It was it was the uh, uh, fiber optic company calling to say they'd hit a water main. And so... Was that uh, the company we approved last month for them to do that? Yes, yes. And... Uh, they were hand digging it, weren't they? No, I what? no. They couldn't have been if you uh, if you looked at the picture that Jeremy sent me uh, of the uh, break in. Uh, uh, I think that was an eight-inch uh, um, AC main, and there was a good chunk out of it. Uh, they hit it hit it with a backhoe or whatever. And anyway, I, I, when I called Jeremy, you know, of course, right away I was concerned about you know what we're what we're dealing with, and um, <clears throat> he already was on it, already been in touch with uh, Forbes, and um, he said that uh, Forbes was on a job they couldn't get there on Monday unless it was an absolute emergency, and then they would. Uh, so when Jeremy checked on, uh, you know, who, who was being serviced by that, basically it was uh, VFW. Uh, and that, that was it. So, uh, and also Forbes had to get a, a vector truck. Uh, out of Novi, that truck was. Novi. Yeah, but they're not out of Novi. The company is from Novi, but they're, yeah, when I talked with Jeremy, he, he told me, he said that he used to work for that company. Oh. And that's that's what he said to me. He says, you guys came all the way up here from Novi? And they said, no, we're, uh, I don't know if they're up in Benzie County. Uh, oh. But anyway, uh, Kevin was able to get them on Tuesday. And uh, but when I talked with Jeremy, he already had things lined up, ready to go. And uh, then I, I talked with um, Don um, at the yeah. VFW um, Battle Bunker. And uh, he was very, very understanding, very patient. Um, and uh, he said they would do what they needed to to get through. Uh, they brought in some Porta Johns for the day, and, but uh, then Tuesday morning, first thing, um, I went to check on it, and uh, they were all there working, and when I pulled in, started talking to Jeremy, he says, it's, it's all done, it's repaired, they're just closing the hole up, so he, he couldn't figure out how, why they were going as deep as they were, because usually that fiber optic, they only go a foot or two, and they were down that that main, that six inch main, he said was about close to, it was either five feet or six feet down. So, anyway, um, I, I just, I guess I want to update you on that and let you know that, um, you know, I've, I've been impressed. Jeremy's been, I think, doing a good job for us. But then, unfortunately, later in the morning, he informed me that he will be done as of the end of November, that he's going back downstate. Um, and so I have not had a conversation with Josh regarding that yet, but Jeremy said that he, um, he had two interviews uh, with potential uh, replacements for him, and Jeremy had, had worked with one guy uh, a little bit, and was, he was going to start training whoever, so I, I've got to get updated from Josh. But just so you're aware, we're looking at another a change in our water operator. So, um, and Jeremy did tell me that the guys that Josh interviewed had the same um, uh, licenses that he has and everything. So, but uh, hopefully, yeah, I, I, I was uh, real concerned when we lost Mike, and uh, Jeremy, I, I think, has done real well, been a, been a good, good hire. So, hopefully, they'll come up with another good hire for us. Yeah. Another note. Did uh, you find out that fiber optic, which way it's going? Or remember we had questions when we okay, authorized it. Yeah. We didn't know if it's coming from the credit union or going to Yeah, the no, I I don't know which direction <coughs> or, you know where it's if going it's servicing or? the credit union or, or who. I yeah. Okay. Uh, 
I guess unless I write myself a reminder note to do that. Um, I just saw the information. Yeah. Um, okay, the item, item E, uh, I guess I hit that, item F is the approval of, uh, or I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong, let's get in the right place here, Terry. Um, so. We need to do a C. Yeah, let's see. In your packet is the minutes from the um, October DDA meeting along with uh, Tamara's report. Uh, item D, the building and grounds uh, minutes are in your packet for October. Um, item E is the planning commission minutes from the October meeting, which is in your packet. Uh, F is uh, Larry's monthly report. And uh, there is a report from Jim in your packet on the fire department and then uh, item I the election uh, commission uh, just well those minutes from October 5th are in your packet and you guys just met the other day too didn't you for elections yeah, yeah. October 5th and 17th okay the, um, machine public right. accuracy test yeah Okay. All right, that uh, brings us to new business. Item A is consideration of approval for the township supervisor to seek funding for the Oak Hill Park improvements. Basically, uh, just to give you an update on that, um, now that we have our five-year rec plan in place, uh, we are eligible to apply for uh, DNR uh, trust fund or passport grants. Uh, and now I see another one that's out there. Um, additionally, um, I basically you know, want to seek approval to reach out to um, Carlin Haas to see if she would be interested in working with us again uh, and writing a grant. Um, the last time we went for a grant for the Oak Hill Park, um, she wrote it and uh, I, I guess I, I may be interested in, in seeking her help again on that, but I just to update you, I had a discussion about, well, it was last week, uh, I guess early last week, with uh, a gentleman from Fleece of Vandenbrink, um, Matt Biolette, as you know, went from uh, Republic services to he went to work for police and Vandenbrink so he had reached out to me a month and a half two months ago dropped off some information in that and when I got chatting with him a few days later I mentioned something about pickleball courts and whatnot and he said oh we've got a guy here that's he's all in on that and he's a pickleball player himself and quite an outstanding one, but he he knows a lot about pickleball. He's done a lot of work in helping other communities put uh, courts in and, and that sort of thing. So uh, <clears throat> Matt wanted uh, wanted me to have a conversation uh, with this gentleman, so he did call. I spoke with him briefly, and that was, I think, right when I had just tested positive for COVID and was really under the weather and I told him I'd rather have that conversation down the road. So we just chatted real briefly and, and I'm, I'm looking to get back to him probably next week uh, to further that conversation. But <clears throat> what basically what he said was, you know, in terms of, of design and engineering and seeking grants, you know, they can help us with all of that. Um, so I thought, well, that's good. You know, maybe that might be the way to go instead of going with Carla. But then after I got thinking about that, I thought, well, I guess maybe the next thing is we need to reach out to Wade Trim also, since they are our engineer of record. And who knows, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if they could provide those same kinds of services. So um, I do, I would like to try to get pickleball courts in there like we did uh, uh, 
think that was 2020, that we went for that grant unsuccessfully. And uh, that included uh, some playground equipment and a pavilion also. Um, the only difference now is I don't see us going for playground equipment. That was probably the main reason that we were not successful. We lost points uh, in that category because our playground is not um, ADA compliant. And that playground over there would be not only difficult, but quite costly, I think, to, to make it ADA compliant. Um, so I'm looking at mainly just uh, uh, seeking grant uh, funds for the pickleball courts and a pavilion, which would, and, and we did get, we did, before when we went, we did get some uh, uh, quotes on that. Um, I know it's gone up tremendously since then, but uh, the thought was the number of times that I've gone by and seen people that have had uh, rentals of the rec center in the wet, nice weather months put up canopies right next to the rec center there on the asphalt. Um, just makes sense that we have a pavilion there and they don't have to do that. It'll make it a little more user friendly and more, uh, hopefully more attractive. So that's my thought. I will make a motion Chime to uh, have the township supervisor have approval for seeking funding for the Oak Hill Park. I'll support it. Okay, motion by Stegi, support by Achinsky to authorize the supervisor to seek grant funding for uh, upgrades, including pickleball and, and uh, pavilion at the Oak Hill Park. Um, any further discussion? But I guess, you know, I'm, I'm looking for some input from all of you in terms of what, what your thoughts are in terms of the direction we go, whether we, you know, just do it on our own like we did Magoon Creek uh, through a DNR trust fund grant, get a grant and do it, uh, do it ourselves and bid everything out or look to try to work with uh, somebody like Fleece and Vandenbrink or Wade Drummond to lead us through the hoops. So uh, give that some thought and you know, any, any ideas you have or whatever, give me well, a call. Well, we have ARPA money. So, um, we that could be used as a match. We it still have someone yeah. uh, committed. Okay. okay, well, that's good. All right, well, give me any input um, as you think of it. I would appreciate it. Uh, moving on to item B. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, all in favor? Yeah, yeah. The motion, uh, I think everybody's clear on the motion. All in favor of the motion on the t uh, floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, item B is appointment of the Board of Review member for a term ending December 31st, uh, 2022. This is for one month. This is for one month. We have. Uh, the unexpired term. Betty Allen right. resigned and her term would have been And we have two applicants, uh, Kathy Gatuski and Terry Mandeville. Uh, Terry has been an alternate on the Board of Review um, and though she has not, uh, hasn't been necessary for her to sit in, we haven't had anybody absent, she has attended, uh, since she became the alternate, she has attended our Board of Review meetings, uh, sat in just to basically learn the ropes and educate herself. So those are our two applicants. Um, I'd like a motion to uh, appoint Terry Vanderbilt. I'll support uh, Motion by Stegi, support by Hachinski to appoint uh, Terry Mandeville uh, to the uh, Board of Review for the term ending December 31st of 2022. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item C is consideration of approval um, of a resolution of the Charter Township Provider Board of Trustees to approve the private road name change from Cutters Ridge Drive to a National Drive. Um, I'll make the motion that we will have this. I'll second it. Uh, 
motion by Dean Cruz, second by Kolonowski to approve the resolution um, uh, changing the private road um, from uh, Cutters Ridge Drive to National Drive. I know they've been working on that for a while, so. Um, any discussion? Okay, Shirley, you want to um, yeah. do a roll call, please? Um. Brian Cruz? Yes. Walker? Yes. Stacy? Yes. Kalinowski? Yes. Paul? Yes. Kuczynski? Yes. Dean Cruz? Yes. Okay. Um, and I guess I need to sign that and leave that at Tammy's desk for Larry to pick up. Or you need to sign it. Are you talking about this resolution? Yeah, I think then was that the one? Um, I have to sign this, but there you did talk about something that you need to sign. You know, this just says sign the road name change, but uh, the resolution, uh, Larry's going to pick it up on Friday uh, to take to the road commission. So. Could it be this preliminary development agreement that you need to sign that you haven't gotten to yet? Um, that's probably what, yeah, because my name's on there for signature, so. Okay, um, moving into the uh, addendum items then, item D is consideration of approval of the preliminary development agreement with the Charter Township Filer uh, DDA and Gearlings Development Company Incorporated and authorize the supervisor to sign uh, said agreement. And I did send you an email, all of you, I think with that, um, that revised agreement now. Uh, they went in and made changes. Uh, Richard had requested three items to be changed on there, and Chris Bizdock had some changes, the BDA attorney. And um, so they uh, they accommodated us on those changes, uh, added that language to that uh, and, and sent it. And then I, I did get that from Gearlings this morning, and so I forwarded that to uh, Richard and got uh, an email back from him saying that uh, they had uh, fulfilled his request uh, for changes to that language. So, um, and I understand the DDA signed it uh, or approved Bob's okay. signature yesterday for that uh, agreement. So, today they were uh, Bob Yates and somebody was supposed to sign something today. Okay. I'll make a motion that we go with it. And I'll second that motion. Um, so we have a, mo a motion by Brian Cruz, uh, seconded by Walker, to approve um, the preliminary development agreement with uh, the Township DEA and Gearlings Development Company Incorporated and uh, authorizing the supervisor to sign that agreement. Um, any discussion? It's pretty straightforward because if yeah. we don't want to do it, we're done. If yep. we don't want to do it, it's done. Yeah. Well, it sounds real promising. And if a third party it gets it, sounds promising. If a third party gets it, which is uh, affiliate, which is good, they have to go by the same paperwork. So okay. if they were pawning off to a third party. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's uh, well, they, they said it's a standard agreement that they use, and it, it seems pretty simple and straightforward, and all the bases seem to be covered, so. Uh, anyway, uh, Shirley, you want to do a roll call on that? Kaczynski? Yes. Dean Cruz? Yes. Brian Cruz? Yes. Kalinowski? Yes. Walker? Yes. Stady? Yes. Paul? <coughs> okay, item E is consideration of, of approval of an ordinance to amend um, ordinance number 2021-05 uh, styled an ordinance to amend chapter 21 of the Charter Township of Filer Code of Ordinances as amended by amending section 12.04 to adjust the annual service charge and repeal all ordinances in conflict herewith by further amending section 12.04 and the effective date. I'll 
Okay, this came about because Joe Hollander was thinking of that addition over there to Horizon Point, and he wanted to change the um, way he compensates us. So it's an introduction, and I know Richard had asked for a pro, pro forma, so we could see how this new way of uh, charging him was compared to the old way. So uh, hopefully before we have to vote this in, sometime between now and next month, we can get that so we can compare to see that, you know, the it's going to be at least equal, if not better, for us than it was. So what do we have to do, to make a motion to table this? No, can you can that? introduce no, it. No, we can introduce it, uh, yeah. get it published. And, and I did see an email from the uh, exchange between Richard and um, uh, Joe Hollander uh, regarding that. The Joe's attorney uh, was in court today and couldn't respond to Richard with the information he wanted, but he told me he would uh, get that to him on Monday, as I recall his email said. So hopefully we'll get more information next week. I'll make the motion then that we I'll support it. A uh, motion by Brian Cruz, support by Hachinsky to approve uh, the uh, ordinance change in ordinance number 2021-05. Uh, any other discussion on that? You want to do a roll call then, Shirley? Or? We can. Yeah. Well, if we don't need to. You don't need uh, yeah, this is just uh, introduction. the introduction, so we don't need to. Uh, so we'll do a uh, call. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, the last item I asked to have on there is a laptop. Uh, when I got up this morning and got on my laptop, uh, <laughs> oh, it was a black screen, and I, I tried a number of things, uh, and I couldn't get it to work at all, so I gave Tammy a call and I brought it up, because usually a lot of times if it's a simple fix, she can take care of it. She said no, nope. so it, it was uh, either call in to IT right, uh, have somebody come down from Gaylord, or take it to Jack Pine, so I ended up taking it to Jack Pine. Um, that was just shortly after lunch, and they looked at it, and they called me later in the afternoon uh, and said that the motherboard was no oh good. It needs a new motherboard, and so when I called him back, talked to him, uh, cost on a new motherboard, he said, would be uh, a little over $400, including the parts plus labor. And I said, what would a comparable, a new uh, laptop uh, comparable that would be? And he said it would probably be you know, in the neighborhood of a little over $600 for a new laptop. So, and I, I for some reason, I had, I was thinking, gee, that laptop's only two or three years old. And then when I started thinking about it, the old one that's still sitting in my office down there, and, and the guy, when I talked to him, he says, yeah, that, that laptop's probably at least uh, six or seven years old. So, Isn't it it's it's, something when they tell you that? Yeah. Uh, how many motion? Probably all of that. Approve the purchase of a laptop for a supervisor not to exceed the cost of twelve hundred dollars. Oh, second. Okay, motion by Brian Cruz, support by Dean Cruz, to approve the supervisor to purchase a new laptop, not to exceed twelve hundred. He said six hundred. It'd be about six hundred. Yeah, I know, but you might need some. Uh, well, that software. Should be, yeah, mm -hmm. That should be plenty. So oh, okay, not there? to exceed twelve hundred dollars. Um, I want some lights or something like that, or some metal. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should get two for that. Yeah. Because actually, yeah. we should have a new one for the election thing, but we don't want to get that yet. This one's. It really came thing. down. I remember, the company bought me my first one was like thirty six hundred. Yeah. So those things are come down a long way. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. have. Okay, so we have a motion um, and a second. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, okay, any other public comment for tonight? Mr. Rumstead. Real quick, you were mentioning your park project. Uh, I just chaired the DNR budget for 10 years. There's a new Spark Grant program for yes. the DNR. Yep. I would encourage you to look at that. It's administered by the DNR. Michigan Spark Grants or support project to provide safe, accessible public recreation facilities and spaces to improve people's health, introduce new recreation experiences, build on existing park infrastructure, 
and make it easier for people to enjoy both indoor and outdoor recreation. This grand opportunity is possible because of the Building Michigan's Together plan signed in March. So I think your project would fit the sparks yeah. pretty, pretty to a T. So really look at that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I did. I have gotten some emails on that spark grant, and, and uh, the gentleman I spoke with, uh, Brian, uh, I can't think of his last name right now, from Fleece and Vandenberg, he mentioned Spark Grant as well. So. And they, they just started letting some of those off. They're going to do it in pockets of money. Yeah. So it's not all at once. That's what I understand. Okay. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay. Um, anything else to come before the board tonight, Tom? Do you have anything? Yeah, we'll have to put our signs up for uh, warning our walkers out of the Goon Creek, Europe. Get them up oh, yeah, right. yeah. and over 15 so that yeah. walkers are aware that there may be a hunter in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know we do it every year. Yeah. I'll, okay. uh, I'll remind Paul of that. I'm sure, I'm sure Tammy's going to, if she hasn't already reminded him, she probably will, but I'll, I'll make a note to, okay. to do that too. Shirley, do you know of any ordinance? On our light poles that are on a highway, is there an ordinance saying that we can only put that fiberglass one back up? I don't know why there'd be an ordinance on it. I think it's more what consumer power is telling us we got to do. I don't think we get into what kind of power poles they have to put up at all. I think they just put up their power poles. I know sometimes there's nicer looking ones and maybe there's money that well, municipalities pay for that but I, I brought this up at the DDA sit on board uh, there's a there's a pole laying on the ground out here by the clinic where our new township sign is at it's been laying in a ditch for a long time and I know Terry has been in contact with consumers well what I suggested at the DDA meeting was to if this development comes in and we're going to pick a certain kind of street light to, to go with that, I'd like to install a street light, and I think DDA will pay for it, so that if anybody decides they're going to put street lights up and we want to do it uniform for the township, we would have one on display to show them what we want and, and, and have the information available. <coughs> I have no idea what the light fixtures cost, but... Well... You could try calling, um, who's our commissioner now? Yeah, sure. try calling him and uh, ask him about that. You know, get nice poles. When, when Mark was our representative, we maybe saw him two times in four years. I think he's been there two years and we haven't seen him at all at our meeting. So, <coughs> no. Mark would at least come and find out what's going on so he could give a report at the county commission. You ever talk to Eric? I, no. I occasionally uh, will either talk or email. I, I can shoot him an email or give him a call and ask him to yeah, attend our, that might one be of our some, coming board meetings. That might be something that, uh, you know, if this uh, project does roll along, that, you know, the uh, planners could put in as a um, condition, uh, you know, a certain kind of a light pole. And, but then a developer would probably have to pay for it, I would guess. Oh, yeah. No, if out of development, yes. But this particular one here, because it's down and it's near our sign, yeah. tie it together with our sign is what we're trying to do. But, and I don't know where that came from. Somebody said, well, there's an ordinance. You can't do that. Well, I told them I didn't think it was. I don't think there's an ordinance. There may be some reason, but I think it would be the power company. That well, okay. They're a, they're a fiberglass pole. Yeah. And I know, like with the mailboxes and stuff like that, you can't put anything that's solid on the highway, like a sign, like a mailbox or a sign. They make them so they break in case a car hits them. And I do know that these cast iron light poles do break because I've seen them, seen it done on River Street with the ones they got. They're cast iron. You hit them with a car, they'll break, just like the fiberglass. So oftentimes the ordinances will read that we have to comply with any other lawful requirements. And, you know, that would probably fall under that kind of an umbrella, but yeah. not specifically that says you have to use this kind of a light bulb. Well, I was just running that by just to, in case if there was something like that. Not that I know and, of. And maybe Terry will get into the decorating the poles. We used to, we had a contract with a company to decorate the poles. 
our, the lighting on, on the main highway is terrible. The, a few nights ago I went through and there was at least 10 or more lights that were totally out. And we used to decorate them and have problems with them every year. Well, the company we had a contract with, they, they released us from this last year of contract. So what the DDA plans on doing is the big tree on the corner by the old bank. They're going to decorate that tree, being you and I. How many years ago was that we went there? Oh, a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. To get that tree. Pay for the power out of the bank. I'm not sure. If there's well, a, that's what your report said, I read. Now, Patty was had volunteered to go today to check out the power there, and I checked my email just before the meeting tonight, and she had sent an email back to Tamara that she was there and could not find an outlet unless it was we, hidden well, in the head. We looked, or something. That, that made me wonder because when we were working on that, Dean and I walked all around that place and we didn't find any outside. But the guy that owns it now said there was. And yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know if, she, if, if they found it yet or not. And that light pole that's down on 31, the that came up at our last EDA meeting. I went home that night and got on the uh, computer and reported that to consumers. And then, like we were talking the other day, just last week when I drove by, I looked out in the ditch and I could s see it still laying there. So they they have not made any kind of an attempt to that I'm aware of to... So I'll get back on, on uh, that uh, consumer's uh, power outage map, uh, check that out and see. Well. Let's not push that too fast if we're going to decide to put a street light yeah. of a different type on. Yeah. So, you know. All right, so you want me to lay off on that for the time being? Well, let's not push them anymore. We asked them one time, and I, I guess we should we could find out if we could change that to a different type of fixture. Yeah. That and I be. think I did mention to you, didn't I, that I got in an email some attachments of from downstate that my son sent me of... Uh, Yes, we did. Street lights, some really attractive lights that they do. They've done a lot of different things with down there with banners and different light, kinds of lighting. And yeah. Really attractive. And I mentioned that at the DDA. Oh, okay, good. That you have that information available. Okay, good. See, because with these fiberglass poles, they won't allow us to put any kind of banner. We were able to put them, yeah. wrap them in greens and put them lights on it, but that was all they would allow us to do. Yep. In this way, we can get something that we can... Hard to believe the wind shear would be, you know, for a little flag or something on those poles wouldn't withstand, but... You know, I think at one time the DDA did pay for the street lights going down Red Apple. Uh, yeah, they they put put those the installation in. of them, yes. Yes, so I yeah. don't know if they were told what kind they had to put up or if the DDA had a chance to pick. At the time we weren't in a process of getting a develop. Mental. No, but I'm saying that they, uh, they did take I remember that. Two nights ago I went down Red Apple, the new lights there by Pine Ridge, there was only one of them left. Yeah. So I don't know if they when there's stay around. Right right and it's nighttime, I'm grateful for those lights. One was lit though. When, when you see lights that are out like that, just shoot me a text or an email of a location, because then I can go on and report it. You know, there's like five or six of them there. They end there at the Hitsa house, and so. Okay. And so there was one lit past Pine Ridge's entrance, so I don't get it. They might be lit tonight. I mean, yeah. They get so screwed oh, up. Like my wife, Mrs. Claus, doesn't like your lights. <laughs> I hear it every year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is it? I believe that's it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Dean, you got anything else? No. I'm... Dale? Any new development on the speed limits for the uh, Red Apple? Have you heard anything? Uh, the, the, when I went to the road commission meeting back in October, they uh, were going to send the petition from the, the residents plus our resolution that we had given and send it out to where we're supposed to go along. So what happened? I didn't know. That was October 12th meeting, so maybe something will come up at the yeah. November meeting. Who, who has the, that'd be next week, the road I commission I go meeting. next week to the road commission. Uh, that just reminded me, we talked last month about these, the flashers and the lights. Mm -hmm. I looked it up and I didn't shop around, but just what came up on Google. They're about $4,000 a piece. They're solar powered, 
And if we were to buy four of them, we'd have a pretty good piece of change just to slow traffic down. And when I talked to the sheriff, the uh, deputy, the under sheriff, he said he spent many a day on Nelson Street catching speeders when he was a trooper. And so he was well aware of the problem. So it would have been Nelson Street and, and Platte City Road. But my idea there yet is if we, if we mount them on a 4x4 four four and up to Copemish or Thompsonville, you, if you want to look at them, or by Ludington, there's some on 10. But that's got to be MDOT there. But these were done by individuals, the villages. They're incorporated villages, so they had to pay for it themselves. The Road Commission, I already talked to Mark, they want nothing to do with it. So uh, they may install it for us, but if we install it on a 4x4, four four, we could put it up like for six months on going one way on Nelson Street and another one on one way going on Philip City Road. And then after six months, pull them out there on a 4x4, four four, put them in the ground someplace different to catch the attention in a different spot. So we could move them around if, if. That sounds like someone else could move them around too and they'll have them in their Halloween decorations. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose that could happen, but. I see that one in Colmish coming in is permanently put in the ground. Mm -hmm. The one coming in Genos. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's up to you guys. I think we should buy a couple. Yes, I Don't do have to buy four at a time, buy one maybe. And get it permanently installed like up here on Filer City Road or Nelson. And then see how that works, and then maybe buy another one. Well, I'm going to say Nelson because remember we had the problem with that car parking in front of the, that truck that was lifted, parked in front of yeah. the stop sign, yeah. and they were running that, and that's pretty. So that I know it's a four-way stop, and nobody should get hit, but we've had a yeah. couple of accidents there. Oh, the board wants to look into it a little bit more if, if you're interested in it. I think I'll dig into it and see for sure, give you a price and everything. I just made a note to check, uh, uh, I'll go, on, go online and check with uh, Dornbos. We have ordered signs from them in the past. Um, you know, speed limit signs and I like for other Magoon and so forth, so I'll see if they have any. Yeah. You all set then? No, I'm all set. Brian? I was just wondering, how are we, how are we coming on that light Magoon? Okay, we, where we're at right now is we're still waiting for the franchise agreement. Um, I've talked with Mark Fulchek and, and given him the go ahead to put the pole in with the light attached to it and wiring down that, that he'll need. Um, uh, <clears throat> I was supposed to meet with uh, a new field rep from Great Lakes Energy out of Scottville office by the name of Ernie, um, and that was. That was uh, a week and a half ago when I had COVID, and so I didn't, uh, Bob, Bob met with him, and they got everything ironed out, and then I followed up with a phone conversation with Ernie, and, and we're all set there. Um, he's going to be getting me a quote, uh, email, I just spoke with him again yesterday, and he said, yeah, he's pretty close to having that quote ready. Um, What's that quote for? For the running uh, electrical under the road, underground. Okay, all those quotes right here. Well, that was for quote going um, south on the on the east side of Red Apple to the midpoint of the park entrance, and then going under the road over. Um, okay. And that that was uh, contingent upon getting. Um, uh, in agreement for the easement from the property owners there and so we were working on that and everything well um, he's telling me now they said it, it'll be a lot easier and more cost effective if we just go right from that uh, post on the northeast corner of Hemker Lane and Red Apple right diagonally over to the park and I said well I thought the problem there was with the number of trees in the park that they'd have, he said, oh no, he said, we'll be going way under the trees. That's not gonna be an issue. So I don't even remember the last quote. I was looking for it the other day, but um, he said, you know, he threw out a figure in a neighborhood of $1,600 uh, for the wiring. Uh, and that, I think that was, I think that was just the boring though. Uh, 
running. It wasn't the cost of the wire itself. So it's, you know. So we're just waiting. I said I want to get all everything, our ducks in a row, so we can pull the trigger as soon as we get that um, franchise agreement from Great Lakes. And Ernie also said he'd put a bug in there here up there. Richard's been contacting that attorney in Boyne City. Uh, we just haven't gotten around to it. 